Good morning. Good morning, first grade, are you here? I hope you're standing up and singing back to me. Yes, Mr. Coulter, we are here. Good morning, first grade. Ready for the morning verse? Standing up for morning verse. It's the way to greet the day. It's respect for the world and the life that you have and the sun that shines on us. Ready? The sun with loving light makes bright for me each day. The heart, the sacred power, gives strength unto my limbs. In sunlight shining clear, I am reverent. The strength of humankind has so graciously been planted in my soul that I, with all my might, may love to work and learn. Toward us comes light and strength. From us rise love and thanks. Well, today is Friday. It's the last day of the school week. And I will write it right here. F-R-I-D-A-Y spells day. D-A looks just like a lowercase a. And Y, lowercase y in cursive. Friday, September. T-E-M. Burr, e e er at the end, September. There's that. Look, it looks a lot like a lowercase r. If you just look at that part right there, I don't know if you can see that very well. But anyway, today is September 11th. September 11th, 2020. 2020. Anytime someone says thousand, you know there's going to be four numbers in that number. So many thousands right there, two of them. No hundreds and two tens. We know that that's 20, 10, 20. And nothing at the ones spot there. Friday, oops, dot the I. Friday, oops, cross the T. Friday, September 11th, 2020. And in Spanish, it's uh, viernes. 11 de septiembre, with an I and a B-R-E at the end, dos, uh, 2020. That's that. We have a lot to do today, but I guess we'll say the days of the week, since that's what we usually do. Friday, weekend's next, Saturday, Sunday, two days of the weekend, and then five school week, school days, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, the last day of the school week. And in Spanish, viernes, sábado, domingo, lunes, martes, miércoles, jueves, viernes. As if learning English days of the week weren't enough. But you're at the perfect age, first graders, to learn other languages. Your brain is the most open to learning other languages. So even though it seems hard, it'll only be harder when you get to be older. I promise you that. That's good science. All right. We have A, B, and C. We have Q, R, and Z. And we hope to continue adding letters quickly as we can so we can have the whole alphabet. But pretty soon we'll have enough to really start making some words. We already have A, B, and C, which doesn't spell much like that. Abuk, abuk, abuk doesn't really say anything. But if I was to turn those around, it just turns out that they do make a word. I don't know if you know what a cab is, like it's like the cab is where the, the person sits, the operator sits who's operating some kind of equipment, or a truck, we talk about that as the cab of the truck, where the driver sits, um, or a taxi cab, it's some, so a, a taxi, a taxi cab will drive you someplace, and cab is spelled k k a Oops, that's not my best writing. But, and we already have one word, first graders, cab. I wonder if we have any others. Er, ab, rab. Mm, I don't think that's a word. Er, car. Oh, look at that. It's not an ah sound, but it's an ah sound. Absolutely. K ah. K ah. Funny. A car and a cab have a lot of similarities. How they're spelled and 
they both relate to each other because they both have something to do with vehicles, don't they? Cab and car. Who knew? We would have two words already. Cab and car. Z A B Zab Zab Zab. Mm, I don't think Zab is a word. Okay, that's good enough for that. This is the last time for a little, a little while that I'm going to do the po'o po'o kibi. So I hope you learned it well enough that you could do it on your own any time, day or night, unless you're asleep. We'll switch on to something different next week. Po. Oh, po, oh, he, vi, coolie, va, vai. Stand up. Po, oh, po, oh, he, vi, coolie, va, vai. Po, oh, po, oh, he, vi, coolie, va, vai. E, malama, coquino. Maka, wa, ha. Mana, mana, lima. Maka, wa, ha. Mana, mana, lima. Maka, wa, ha. Mana, mana, lima. E malama coquino. I hu ni ho leve coquino. I hu ni ho leve coquino. I hu ni ho leve coquino. E malama coquino. All right. The R alliteration. Arr. Can you growl at me and say Arr. Growl like an angry dog. We gotta squeeze the back of your mouth together. It's tricky sound. Ragged rascals running round the rugged rocks. Is that what I said before? Running round the ragged rocks. Let's count the R's. Ragged rascals running round the rugged rocks. One R for each word except for the word the in the middle. One more time. Ragged rascals running round the rugged rocks. One more time. Ragged rascals running round the rugged rocks. Good. All right. I have a whole bunch of things in this little bucket that all start with letter R. And when we're done with that, that Auntie Jackie will show up. Don't you think so? I think so. What do we have in this jar? Let's see. Let's see. I'll just hold them up to the camera. Oh, look. I'm going to grab them without looking. How about that? Hopefully, I'll know what they all are. Oh, cute little rabbit. Rabbit. Say rabbit. Rabbit. And. A beautiful rose. It's plastic, though. Uh, let's see what this one is. Another rabbit. And why do I think there's going to be a lot of rabbits? Oh, do you know what this animal is? A rhinoceros with his horn on the top. That was in the Tiptoes book. And I have, oh, another little rabbit. And another... Right lots and lots of little rabbits. Hey, bunny. Oh, hello. My name is Jack. Jack Rabbit and Bunny Rabbit. Hmm, nice to meet you. Let's go play. Okay. Ooh, race car. Capital R. Oh, this used to be what, oh, these days, a lot of people just play their music through their computer. This we still use all the time, though. This was the Auntie Jackie tool, rake. Rake. Oh, a roller skate that you would need if you were playing roller derby, old-fashioned, old-school roller skates. A lowercase r. Another rabbit, cute one. Another rose, rose. What is this? That's something broken something, it looks to me like. That is a rock. So, many things start with R, many more things than that, but that's what we'll 
show for this day. Oh, I think I hear Auntie Jackie. Is it her? It is. Good morning. Aloha. Nice to see you. I wonder what she has today in store. I'm watching the reflection and the camera. That's what I'm doing. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, Mr. Coulter. Good morning. How are you? Well, it's Aloha Friday for us here this very day, live. Um, on Aloha Fridays, I always like to take a big breath. Will you take a big breath with me? Yeah. I've been working on my lessons for the, um, the seventh graders, and I'm thinking about you at the same time. So with the seventh graders, they're learning about the breath in their bodies, and then I am gonna, we're gonna talk about the breath by the trees and the plants. I think you guys could imagine that too. Here in our very, like, um, well, I think it's more relaxing on Friday because I think about tomorrow I can sleep late. How about you? And I wanted to just slow down today and think about what we talked about. We can make sure that you are ready to do some planting and also you understand um, uh, the seed cycle that we talked about. So I went into the garden and I found a seed that could probably explain a lot of what we talked about yesterday. Here it comes, this is one flower. And on this flower stem, we could see all those things I mentioned. I see a flower bud waiting for the bee to come. I'm sorry, I see a flower bud waiting to open. Then I see a flower bud opening and she's waiting for the bee to come. After the bee comes, and provides that, look at what we see here. Do we see this green pod? And inside that pod, when the pod dries out, we get these black seeds. I'm gonna open up that seed pod. Oops, I can hear them on the floor. Kind of hard to show you. There you go, there's our black seed. So, all in one plant, we put the seed in the ground, we get Flower buds, flowers, seed pods, and seeds. Here we go, we're gonna put that in class box. And then I'm gonna visit our seed planting one more time. Maybe we could do it again even next week. You have watered your plant. You have, let's see, let me stop. What I think you have done is that you filled up your pot with soil and you tap, tap, tapped. And then you watered your soil, one, two, three, one, two, three. You did that a few times, then it starts to feel heavy. Then you put your seeds in, doop, doop, and covered it with a blanket, and you watered one more time, one, two, three, one, two, three, because that blanket was dry. And you are ready to go with a stick. You can put the stick in, you can put your name on it, you can draw a picture, you can put the word corn or peace. The last thing I wanted to mention today was watering your plant and how do you know? So what we, what we do is we take our finger. We can feel a lot with our finger, right? If you press it on your forehead right now, you would feel the temperature of your forehead. I am even sweating a little. And with this finger, you can um, feel how hard something is or soft. So we're gonna take our finger and push it into the, just the corner of your pot. The corner, just to see, and push it in. Is it wet? This one's very wet, I can feel the moisture in there. And then when I pull my finger out, if the, the soil sticks to my finger, that's also telling me that it's wet. So that's how sometimes you're gonna check, just, is the soil wet? If your soil is dry, you'll feel it, and it will even move differently. And if you stick your finger in and pull it out of dry, let me pick my pinky in, and pull it out of dry, the soil doesn't stick. When you have your plant and you want to know if it needs water, you stick your finger in and feel how wet it is. So if the soil is sticking, you're, it's wet enough. Flowers make seeds, we plant the seeds, we wait for a new plant to grow. It's pretty simple, but it's also very good for us to remember it and go slowly. Aloha Friday, keep your baby plant under your watch. Make sure it gets what it needs. And we'll talk to you next week. Aloha. Thank you, Auntie Jackie. You're welcome. Thank you. And I think. Yes, we have Cheyenne now. Aloha, Auntie. Cheyenne. Cheyenne. Auntie Cheyenne. Auntie Cheyenne. Who said that? It 
in the house, in the classroom. Well, good morning, Auntie Cheyenne. Hi, friends. Hello, oh, Mr. Coulter. Well, friends, if you remember, last Friday, we um, talked about doing fantastic science on Fridays. And so I hope some of you tried our project from last week. If you didn't, I have a new project for you to try this week at home. So what you're going to need is a penny. You can see. Boop. We have a penny and we have a piece of paper. Just a regular piece of paper. It can be any color, any kind, doesn't matter. Now, I tried this with another friend of ours and they um, had the idea that a paper and a penny could not drop to the ground at the same time. So I'm curious to what you guys think. And you can try this at home and kind of figure it out for yourself, but I'm gonna do it and show you guys, and we're gonna do it together, I guess. So, one piece of paper, one penny, and see if they drop at the same time. You guys hear that penny hit? And it hit way before our piece of paper. But what if we took our paper and we crumbled it all up into a tiny little ball. What do you think would happen then? Would our penny and our paper hit the ground at the same time? Mm -hmm. <gasps> the exact same time. They hit the exact same time. Let's point this at the ground so they can yeah, see. Yeah, ready? You guys see my feet? Can we do a little dance together? Okay, so here we have our paper and our penny. Wow. You guys can hear the penny. I don't know if you can really see it, but you can hear it. Auntie, will you try something? Will you stand, bring the stool back there and stand on it and see it how if it if you drop it from even higher? Will that still work? I wonder. All right, still are crumpled. I'm going to adjust the camera. Well, we can only see your legs, but that's OK. <laughs> All right, friends. So I'm dropping them from way up here with how tall I am. Wow. Exact same time. That is so cool. But remember, friends, our regular piece of paper, let's try it from way up high. It took it much longer to get to the ground, didn't it? Is that because it's bigger in some way? I mean, the penny is definitely heavier. True. So when a piece of paper is all floppy, it's light, right? It's super airy. But when we crumple it, it's got a little bit more weight to it. So when they fall, it's different. Pretty cool science. What about, what if we drop this? This is big. Can we drop this and the penny at the same time? Let's try. Or this and the paper at the same time? Let's do all of them. All right, friends, we're gonna do a big map, a piece of paper uncrumpled, a crumpled paper, and a penny! Ready? Let's see what happens. How are you going to have to do that with only two hands? Magic! I don't know. Ms. Coulter, will you help me? Sure. Well, then I can't drop at the same time. That's true. Okay, see ready, friends? It's all in one hand. We're going to try it out. Oh! Wow. <laughs> it all looked to me like it landed all about the same time. And maybe the paper got stuck in the mat there. It did get stuck in the paper. I mean the mat. We know the paper goes slower. Wow. So fun. So interesting. So friends, I want you to try this at home with different objects and just test out what falls at the same time versus different time. And it's all based on weight. So the heavier something is, it's going to fall really fast. Whereas the lighter, it might float gently down to the ground. Oh, I think you might have said something not quite right there, actually. Uh-oh. Because I don't think it has to do with weight. Mr. Coulter said it doesn't have to do with weight. I don't think it does. Wait a minute. Let's do something else. So this is very light piece okay. of wood, and That's this really is a big bag full of heavy oh, glass it's jewels. Really heavy. So will you try dropping those at the same time from up there? Uh oh, Mr. Coulter, you sure these marbles are gonna? I think they'll stay in there. <laughs> All right. Hold it by the string, and then and then, but make sure that the this bottom of this is the same level as that. There we go. So see friends, you see we're doing this right here. Ready? Whoa, did you see that? Same time. The exact same time. Up. Oh my goodness. 
Let's see, we're gonna try it from higher up, friends, and see what happens. Oh boy, wow, this is actually super interesting. Oh, that bag's gonna break, okay. Ah! We make that at the same well. time. I, I think they land at the same time. What do you guys think? I wonder. I think the reason the paper landed after the penny is because it is so wide. It's wind resistance. It's wide. I think so. Interesting, friends. So I'm curious. I want you guys to try this at home because as we just found, this is really heavy. And this is still really light. But they fell all together. So try. Thank you so much. And good scientists are always trying things and working together and figuring out why things happen. We might even be wrong about why we could things be. happen. I'm curious if any of you try this at home, maybe send Mr. Coulter some of your results and we'll compare and see what objects fall, what objects float. Yeah. Thank you so yeah. much. Thank you, Mr. Coulter. Thank you, friends. It was such a fun Friday. I'll see you next week. Boop, 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 boop. Oh, it's so nice to have you here, Shane. Oh. <laughs> Um, if I find my mask, will you play a clapping game with me? Yes, I will. Okay. Find my mask. <laughs> Silly me. So it was around I my I will neck. teach it to you if you don't mind learning in front of everybody. I'm oh, sure you Lord. Okay. It goes like this. The sailor went to see, 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 to see what she could see, 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 but all that she could see, see, see. The bottom of the deep blue sea, sea, sea. Woo! One time fast and then one time slow. Okay. <laughs> the sailor went to see, 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 to see what she could see, 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 but all that she could see, 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 was the bottom of the deep blue sea, sea, sea. Woo! Hey! Now slow, in case anybody wants to. Now we'll do it. Okay, we face the audience and they can play with us. Okay. Ready? The sailor went to see, 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 to see what she could see, see, see. But all that she could see, 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 was the bottom of the deep blue sea, see, see. Woo! Oh my gosh, you guys have to try that with your parents. Yes, please and do. Anybody who's there with Thanks, you Mr. Play. Coulter. Thank all you right, so much. friends. Enjoy the rest of your Friday. Very good. All right. All right. Now. I want to go through another one of these containers full of stuff because I think it's really fun to see all these things. These are all things, and there's a fancy word for things, which you do not have to learn today, but I'm just going to tell you these are all things are a certain kind of word, a certain kind of word, and there's all different kinds of words, right? There's words that describe stuff, like the weather, like it's sunny, or it's uh, breezy, or it's cloudy, maybe. Those are describing words. And then there's thing words. All the things are nouns. Anything that's a, a thing. Oh, this is the bees. We didn't go through the bees yet. Lowercase b, big b, little b. What begins with b? Big b, little b. Oh, we have a b, b, b. Basket. We have a b -b box. If you can say it before me, that's great. You can say it out loud before I say it. I'll say it's a b -b -b bicycle. Bicycle. Oh, this is a fancy little bracelet. B -b bracelet. And a b barrel. B barrel. Another b box. Oh, this is good. A bear. It reminds me of Uncle David's presentation with us eating the fish, eating the salmon in the river. Here is a b -b boat. Here is a b -b -b bottle for a b baby, maybe. Oh, a, bzzz, a bumblebee. Another boat. Oh, this is for your hair. It's a br b b brush. It has two sounds, b and er. B er. And when it's a br er brush, brush, we can write it like this. Br br brush. And we had something else. It was a br. I can't remember. Br bracelet. Bracelet. Well, that would both start with b and an r. 
Oh, this is a very, very tall boot. This we use to attach things to other things. It's called a b b -o bolt. Oh, this is nice. Up, up, and away in my b beautiful b balloon. Beautiful, that's a describing word, and a balloon, that's a thing word. You don't have to learn that yet, but I just thought I'd tell you. It's a b boat and a, b b a, b a b b bird. bird. another bell. This is a thing that you might wear right here if you were rather feeling rather fancy and you were tiny and it's a little, oh it's a bow. I was gonna say it's a bow tie but it's really just a bow. It's more of a fancy hair bow and a tiny little b b something you might take to the beach. Oh beach that's a noun thing also. That's a thing. B bucket. Oh this one I think I know some little Doggy friends might like a b bone. That would be fun, wouldn't it? Oh, these are great. Some people are afraid of them, but it's a, it's a b bat. You know, bats can eat thousands and thousands of mosquitoes every every hour. Thousands. Bottle, another bottle, another little cute little b bear, teddy bear. What else do we have in here? A lot of stuff. Oh, this is these these. I don't know if you can tell what that is. You use it to keep your shirt closed. It's a b b button. Let's see if you can say it before me. Oh, he's like me. Who has one of these at home? But baby, there's a uppercase and lowercase. B, which I hope that you could actually make one of these with your beeswax. If you have some beeswax or some clay or some, what's that stuff called? Sculpey or plasticine. I don't know what this lizard is doing in there. It's a basilisk maybe. Mm, a basilisk. It's a certain kind of lizard. Basilisk. I see another bell. Looks like a Holiday bell of some sort, doesn't it? And another little b box. Speaking of holiday wrapping presents, what else do? I have another kind of a button that goes on a shirt. Oh, I wear one of these every day to keep my pants from falling down. It's a belt. You can tell that's a belt or not. And this, oh, I know what this is. This is something you tie around the baby's neck while it's eating. This one's a pretty one. It's got some little embroidered flowers on it even. Tiny little b bib. Okay, and another tiny bottle. There we go. Lots of things start with B, don't they? Here's some dust in the bottom of my bucket. And another little bell. Reminds me of India, this little bell. It's the kind of bell I saw there long ago when I went there. All right, that's that. A little movement break, a little crab walk, bear walk, action, because that's always a good way to break up the day. Ready? Forward and backward, forward and backward. Reach your Love and climb your legs ready. Like Uncle David has to. Da, 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 da. Okay, go. Backward. B -b Backward. It starts with a B also. And crab walk. We need a break. We can go backwards, crab walk. A b break. B -b Backwards. Now we had the B's and the R's. Can you keep them all organized in your head? Take a break. Break. All right, I wonder what tricks you all like to do. All right, next. Next, I wanted to give you two more letters, I think. 
And in our story, last, I guess I should review that story a little bit, shouldn't I? We had, if you remember the story from yesterday, hopefully you watched, you tell it. Had to do with three friends that lived together. Do you remember who they were, the three friends? Think to yourself, hmm, there were three friends that lived together. Two of them were animals. We had a mouse, and we had a b bird, and we had a sausage. How is that a sausage would be living with a mouse and a bird? I don't know, but that's how the story goes. So the mouse and the bird and the sausage lived happily together. The bird job was to gather the firewood. The mouse's job was to make the fire, gather the water, and put the pot upon the fire. The sausage's job was to cook, make the soup, and serve his friends. So the three of them had a very happy life together. They all did their work together, and they lived very well and happily. Well, one day the bird was out flying around, gathering firewood, and chanced to meet another bird. And that other bird said, hmm, why are you slaving away gathering all the firewood? Why don't you make those others do it? They just stay home and camp and cook and make fires. That sounds a lot easier. And the bird thought about it and said, didn't say anything at first. Next day, the bird refused to go. I will not go and gather the firewood. Things have got to change around here. I am working too hard. It's not fair. The mouse and the sausage said, oh, this is a very good arrangement. It feels fair to us. We are doing the things that we do, and you rest after you get the firewood and while we make the food. No, 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 said the bird. I will not stand for it any longer. So they drew lots and found that the bird would now gather the water and the Sausage would go hunt for the firewood, and the mouse would cook. Well, the sausage set out to go get some firewood and was met by a dog. And the dog did what he did to the sausage, ate him. Of course, why wouldn't you if you were a dog? The bird got worried about the dog after gathering the water and could not find him anywhere. Flew around, or got worried about the sausage, couldn't find him anywhere. Went, flew around, met the dog. The dog said, yeah, I ate him. What are you going to do about it? <laughs> the dog did not care. And... The bird, in her sadness, gathered up the firewood, brought it back to the fire, and couldn't find the mouse. And in her panic, dropped it just anywhere, and looked around for the mouse, looked around, looked around, looked around, and couldn't find the mouse anywhere. Turns out the mouse, just like the sausage had done in the past, did all the cooking, and at the very last minute, the sausage would jump into the pot, stir it round, and leave a little flavoring from the sausage in the soup. Mmm. So then, bird couldn't find the sausage anywhere and so she went in her in her in her haste to look for the bird uh, sorry, <laughs> to look for the mouse she dropped the firewood just anywhere and it landed near the fire and now the fire was out of control burning everywhere so the bird ran down to the hopped down to the, the stream with a bucket to gather water and got too much water in the current carried her away and down to the bottom and was drowned and they didn't live happily ever after but that's what happened to them So it was, so it is, and so it shall be. So that's my memory of that story. Usually when we're in school, you remind me of the story and you tell as much of it as you can. So your job, now that you've heard the story twice, is to tell that story to somebody else, okay? Or act it out. If you have three people, you can act it out and you can be the bird and someone can be the sausage and someone can be the mouse or whatever order you want. All right. So that's that, and today I'm thinking about uh, two more letters. It's a little bit of a stretch, perhaps, but the sausage does start with S, and if you had two of them, if you had two sausages, sometimes they're kind of curved. You ever notice that? And in the old, in the old butchers and places where they make sausage from scratch, they often Sort of, they come together, tied up. Oops. They kind of come like that, where they're kind of connected. And that looks awful lot, some, somewhat like an S. All that good. Of course, if we had a story with a snake in it, which I think is what happens in the Tiptoes book, which we will read in a little while, we might have a snaky. S. This time we have a sausage S. And this one's even more of a stretch. Let's see if we can make this happen. So a mouse has a tail. Has a tail. 
And then mouse is shaped like this, but they've got this, they've got their, their back leg is strong. It's almost like there's a little, and then his head is over here. And he's got a little foot here, a little too much of an angle. Little pointy nose, that's his little foot, that's his little foot. This looks a bit like a lowercase m, if you really use your imagination. I'm going to go over it. So if I took this tail, and if the tail was up here, and then you went like this, this part here really is more like that. It's not really up there like that, but I'm just using my imagination. I'm seeing this mouse like that. There's a couple of whiskers and his little nose and an eye right there. Looks a little bit like a mouse. The other thing is if we have really a better picture of this might be like this. On our island we have, I kind of want you to come a little closer. On our island we have an island, whoops, in the middle of the ocean. Our island has two mountains on it. There's two, there's actually five mountains made up Hawaii, of course, but if we just see the two biggest ones here, that mm, mountains are shaped a bit like an uppercase M. And if you remember this what wild wood. We have w waves in the ocean. And in the w w wave, we also have what I think of as a W, especially a lowercase w. And then we have the mountain. So we could actually squeeze four letters out of this. If you can remember the w and the m, and of course, the w, I like to put those together because the w and the m are really kind of just upside down versions of each other. So there's the w and there's the m. So you can practice all of those letters, all four of those letters, and we will do them together right now over here. So hopefully you either have some chalk and a chalkboard or a scratch paper and a writing utensil. Let's start with S. S is honestly the trickiest one. W and M you're going to find uh, much easier. Oh, three letters, not four. Oh, it's four. S, M, and W, three letters. S is the hardest because this curve starts this way, and then it goes that way, and then it comes back this way. And it's actually more difficult than it looks to make that happen. So you practice it with your finger, get someone to mark it in yellow, so that you can then go over it with a darker color. Lucky thing is, the lowercase s looks just the same, just smaller. So please practice all of those. M and W are going to be a little easier. You can make it, most people make their M's from the bottom up, and that's okay. If you really want to be technical about it, if you really want to be perfect about it, and make your M's like an architect makes them so neat and tidy. Have you ever seen an architect drawing, a drawing person who draws buildings and plans? They often make their letters so incredibly beautifully. It must be a big part of architecture school. W, same thing. Q, 
truth of the matter is, I tend to make my M's like this. And my W's like this. I'm going to use a different color. The tall mountains. Maybe a little snow on the tops of them. And the wet, wild, wet waves peeking up like that. Wet wild waves and the tall mountains. So on your first letter that you're working on, when we do it in our main lesson book, we might do a little of this, and that'll be Monday. So you have all weekend to practice your S and your M's and your W's. I guess I should cover lowercase as well. The lowercase W is just the same as the uppercase W, like that, only just half the size. Baby W, 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 wobble you. I used to call it a wobble you because it makes a wh wh sound, and it sounds kind of cute and funny to say wobble you. I like to call it a wobble you. Some in other languages they call it a, like in Spanish or in French they call it a double V, which means double V, double V, double V which is really more what it looks like. If it's a double U, then we might draw it like this. There's two U's, double U. But that's just how things get a little confused. Double, lowercase m is a little trickier. It's very much like the R, though. Start in the, in the middle. So this is my bottom line. This is my middle line. And there's the top. And the lowercase m only takes half the, the length. Not all of them. Some of them go way up here, like the t and the b and other things. But the lowercase m starts here, goes down and bounces, and goes all the way up to the top of the mountain, and then whoo, bounce down and back up. And there. That is a lowercase m. I'm going to do it again in a different color. Start here. Down and bounce, and down, bounce, and down. All right, lowercase and uppercase M, W and lowercase W, uppercase and lowercase S. You could also say capital S and lowercase S, or big S and little s. Doesn't much matter to me how you work, what you call. All right, so that's that, and that is about the end of the lesson, and I will read a little bit of tip toes covering these letters that we just talked about, just so that you have them. And on Monday, unless I forget, we'll look at all the S things, the little things like the we looked at the B things, like the bicicleta, the bicycle, and oh, there's a basilisk hanging from the bicycle. That's silly. Maybe the basilisk is trying to ride the bicycle. I don't know. So we have R and S. We did R recently in this book, and so we will read the S chapter. S is for swan. I'm looking around to find my glasses, which are right over here. In my b -b backpack, which I leave over there. There we go. S is for swan. I'll show you the picture in a moment. Again, the alphabet by Reg Down. Tiptoes lightly led the way to Running River. The sun was soaring towards the heights, and lazy clouds floated in the sky. Tall reeds and rushes grew in patches along the banks of the river. The ducks and moorhens liked to make their nests in them where they were out of sight. The minnows also liked to swim where the reeds grew in the water. There were lots of places for them to hide if a bigger fish came along looking for lunch or supper. 
Tom and June settled down on the river bank with tiptoes. They lay in the grass and looked up at the sky. Pinecone and Pepperpot explored the edge of the water where it made a little beach and watched the water boatmen insects rowing across the shallows. Here she comes, the gnomes cried suddenly. Who, asked Tom and June, sitting up. A white swan was sailing up running river. She kept to midstream and slowly, majestically floated towards them. Her feathers were purest white, her neck was gracefully curved, and her beak was tangerine orange set in black. She was serene and elegant. That's the Swan Queen, said Pinecone in a hushed voice. She's the letter S. Tom and June sat quietly. It wasn't often they saw the Swan Queen on the river. She had her nest further down in soggy mire where it was more protected. When she had sailed past, they took out their sketchbooks and drew her. Pinecone and Pepperpot showed how the S sat inside her form perfectly. Let's go looking for more S's, said Juneberry, and they headed for the forest. It wasn't long before they found one in a squirrel standing on his hind legs and chewing a nut, his fluffy tail making an S-shaped. He finished eating and scampered away. They searched some more, and Tom started turning over logs as they went along. What are you doing? asked Juneberry. You'll see if I find one, said Tom. Soon he did. It was hiding under a fallen branch. Eek! screeched Juneberry, jumping back as a snake shot out and slithered away over the forest floor. It's just a garter snake, said Tom. They're not poisonous. There are lots of them around here. They're full of letter S. Ah, uh, just don't find a rattlesnake, warned Tiptoes. S is beautiful as a swan and dangerous as a poisonous snake. Tom looked shocked. He hadn't thought about rattlesnakes. They wandered back the way they'd come. Tom saw S in the shape of weeds swaying in the current of running river in a piece of string he found in his pocket. Juneberry discovered an S-shaped cloud and in the way the wind blew in the long grass as it passed over the meadow. Farmer John came onto deck to deck the, to, to the deck onto the deck of the house. Well, that means the lanai. Uh, time for lunch, he called. Tom and June ran up the hill to the farmhouse. Their dad had made spaghetti and tomato sauce sprinkled with cheese. They found lots of S's in the spaghetti and ate every single one of them. That is the S. And I have uh, Wubble you, W. W is for water and wave. The children and the gnomes left the barn and ambled towards Running River. By the way, you do not have to listen to this story right now. You can listen to it later if you want to. Tom found, uh, let's see, uh, toward Running On the way, they kept an eye out for the letter V, which they had just learned. Tom found a small one in the nails of the shallows overhead and Juneberry found a tiny bee in a mayfly's tail when one landed on her sleeve. I see lots of bees if my fingers are spread out, said Juneberry, holding up her hands. How many, asked Pinecone. Remember we talked about double U, double V? There's a V right here. Looks like half a double, doesn't it? That's why we call it a double V. We should call it a double V instead of a double U. That's just getting confusing. Hmm. They walked along the driveway and climbed the fence into the meadow where the great oak tree grew. They were close to the tree when a flock of white pigeons came flying past over the forest. They swooped down, but just as suddenly rose up again and flew over the oak tree. Look, look, cried Tom, repeating the movement with his hand. Do you see that? The birds fly in a V in the air. Tiptoes joined them when they reached her tree. They went on to a small sandy beach and looked, stood looking over the water. The breeze was blowing and the waves were dancing on the river. There's the letter W, said Pinecone. Wherever wind and water meet, you'll find w waves in the letter W, said. And he drew the letter in the sand with his finger. There are thousands of wavy W's on the running river, all the way down to the sea, said Pepperpot. 
And the whole sea is covered with W's, big and small, said Tiptoes. I've gone and seen them for myself. Just then, Greenleaf, the sailor, came up running river in his leaf boat. Greenleaf lived beneath a willow beside the water. Every year, he grew a new leaf boat. When he sang, the boat sailed magically up the waves and down the waves with the wind or against the wind. Sometimes when he'd sung his boat into motion, Greenleaf played a traveling song on his flute. Greenleaf, Greenleaf, where are you going? called Tiptoes, and Greenleaf replied, Over the waves and far away, I'll be sailing all today. Where I wonder who can tell, ask the winds where the waters dwell. Then off he sailed, up the waves and down the waves, until his boat was tiny. He was almost out of sight when he stood up and called out, Sorry, I forgot. Enjoy the party. He gave a last wave and was gone. Party? What party? asked Tom, turning to Pinecone and Pepperpot. Party? asked Pinecone to Pepperpot. Party? said Pepperpot to Pinecone. You guys know something, said Juneberry, wagging her finger at them. Don't they, Tiptoes? But Tiptoes had vanished completely, and when Juneberry turned back to Pinecone and Pepperpot, they'd vanished too. One more letter. We are going to skip back into the story and read about the letter M. Let's see here. That night, Tom and Juneberry sat at the table in the living room. They were practicing their letters, one after the other, using beeswax crayons. Tom loved how the shapes were all different. Juneberry dreamed up stories for each letter. She also drew each letter in a different color and tried to decide which was the best color. I think K is definitely a red color, said Juneberry, and F can be fiery red, too, said Tom. I saw lots of Fs flashing in the flames of the bonfire Dad made yesterday. And the letter I is shining yellow, said Juneberry. It can also be white, she added after, after a while. It's yellow when we are happy and white when we are pure. I. And brown when we are grumpy, said Tom, and Juneberry agreed. Farmer John came along. He looked over their shoulders to see what they were doing. Those are beautiful letters, he said. I like beeswax crayons. They col their colors glow so brightly. Pinecone and Pepperpot said you had to let us paint the letters, said Tom. Can we paint now? Farmer John looked at his watch. Yes, but there's only time for one painting, he said. I'll set things up. He fetched the paints and gave Tom and June a sheet of watercolor paper each. Let's do wet on wet painting, said Juneberry. So they wet the paper under the kitchen tap before putting it onto their painting boards. As soon as their brushes touched the paper, the paint spread out beautifully in radiant colors. Tom and June painted the snowy mountains with their tall, snow-covered peaks and green-blue flanks. Tom added a flock of ducks flying in the sky. Juneberry added rounded brown mounds near the bottom of her picture. When the paper was almost dry, they placed the letter M inside their painting. Their dad stopped by as they were finishing. You've, got, you've done the letter M, I see, said Farmer John. Tom nodded. Pinecone and Pepperpot showed us this this afternoon. M is for mountains. We found seven perfect M's in the snowy mountains. And M is also for molehills, said Juneberry, pointing to the brown mounds. They showed us those too. I know those mole hills, said Farmer John. They're the top at the top of Chiron's Meadows. Chiron is Tom and June's pony. M is for mallards, said Tom. See, my ducks are flying in an M shape. Farmer John was impressed. M is also for mouth, said Juneberry, climbing onto her chair and tracing the shape of her dad's mouth with her finger. And M is for maybe it's time for young maidens to go marching to bed, said Farmer John, putting his arms around Juneberry and picking her up. No, cried Juneberry, wiggling. Pinecone and Pepperpot said they'd come and tell us about the story of the letter N. Good, said Farmer John. They can tell you after you're ready for bed, and I've put these paints away. All right, dear first graders, I am so happy to have been here with you today, telling stories, drawing letters, and doing all kinds of activities with Auntie Jackie and Auntie Cheyenne and looking at all those things that start with the different letters. So we will continue on next week. Have an 
excellent weekend.